Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome finally to the Muscle of Yarn podcast. And if you stick around till the end, you'll understand why we said finally. <laughs> There's like 30 minutes of pre-takes for you guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, um, so welcome. This is a podcast about knitting, yarn, crocheting, sometimes spinning, and other things related to fiber and fiber arts and the fiber industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we broadcast, or broadcast, we podcast, <laughs> this is not live, um, we podcast from our yarn store in Shelburne, Vermont, where you can come shop in person or online. We've got our, lots of great local awesome, yarns yeah, behind and It's head. all local stuff here. Um, so yeah, we'd like to stock as much local product as possible, because we have such an amazing fiber culture here and fiber industry Mm -hmm. Uh, we really like to showcase what local farmers are doing they have some amazing products beautiful stuff Mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so you can find the store at on all social media as muscle of yarn so follow us on instagram facebook ravelry join our ravelry group we have a really fun group of people over on ravelry and it's getting the page is getting more and more active yeah uh, which i think is super fun I know I haven't been on this week yet, so I haven't caught up with everything, but it is a lot of fun. Yeah, people are pretty excited about the shift along. So many people so. have been doing... Oh, yeah. They've at least done probably one of one project, and they liked it so much they want to do, do some more. of the others. Yeah. I know. I was yeah. thinking about the sweater, too, that it's really cute. It does look... It is. It's intriguing. It's so different looking. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, anyway. So, and I'm Angela. And I'm Kelly. And you can find me out on social media, Instagram, and Ravelry as Junior Bird Kid. And you can find me on Instagram as Kelly O. Spins. And you can find me on, what's the other one? Ravelry. Ravelry. <laughs> that one place. That knitting place. <laughs> that fabulous place as Kelly Spins. And feel free to follow or friend us on mm-hmm. either of those platforms. Um with my Instagram account, you're going to see everything from um, pictures of my kids to knitting to... Mm-hmm. I was taking pictures of flowers last week. There's a turtle. Them. Did you see the turtle um, on mine? The I, I did see yours. We had a, we have a painted turtle that laid eggs that I have pictures of. Really? I just haven't had time to post yet. I couldn't believe the size of her. I looked down and I'm like, there's something enormous on my lawn. She was like yeah. this big that just her shell was like yeah, that long snapper yep anyway yeah we had a little painted turtle was it monday yeah it was monday that laid her eggs and skedaddled off and it's down yeah. right down by the road at the bottom of oh, our driveway okay. so we marked it off we'll have mm-hmm. to maybe put something up because when the town comes through to mow yeah i was gonna stake mow. off where ours is so one of our where she she put like two nests in one is in the driveway out to my barn Mm -hmm. and it's a little bit off to the side so it should be fine and then the other's kind of in the lawn but I was looking in there um the incubation is like a hundred and like somewhere between a hundred and 120 days or something like that but it's usually early fall yeah so I'm like oh man our the painted turtle 72 days so we actually we looked it up and then we marked it out on the calendar Mm mm-hmm the yeah. poor turtle babies are gonna be like stalked for you know a day or two by my kids yeah. wanting to see if they hatched yet they hatched yet abigail's like can we go check the nest i'm like no we cannot <laughs> is the mommy turtle there no it mommy won't have changed yet <laughs> i know yeah it's, it's kind of cool though yeah i guess the snappers they have they don't have great that's yeah, what you would, survival. Mortality. The high mortality. Yeah, they have high yeah. mortality, so not that many of them survive. So, but they they don't have any natural predators here. So they once they so, if they grow to adulthood, they they, they thrive and yeah. they live for a long, long time. Yeah. They've said that they think that they can live up to two hundred years. Wow! But most of them, they figure, live somewhere between eighty and a hundred. Wow! Yeah, isn't that That's crazy? Pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've had a couple, um, there's a couple ponds down from our house, mm-hmm. and there's some snappers that live in there, like, good size, like, we, like, like shell, like, that's, they're, they're enormous. Yeah. I wouldn't want to get in the path of that thing. <laughs> but anyway, you did not come here to listen to us talk about turtles. No. Maybe. They're pretty I, cool. They are cool. It was really cool to, like, watch the turtle lay eggs. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. But anyway. Um, you came here for yarn, hopefully, or knitting, or you know, 
just hang out with laughing Kelly at us because <laughs> that's okay. We understand. We completely. get it. We totally get it. Uh, we start a podcast every week with our pick of the week. We do. Oh and yeah, pick of the week. <laughs> pick of the week. Yeah, I kind of folded the paper a little weird, so that's okay. We have show notes. We, They're yeah. hanging up right so there. So if you see us looking, it's just to make sure we don't miss anything. So we like to start with a pick of a week, pick of the week. And the last few weeks, we've had picks that are leading up to a knit along that we're doing, mm-hmm. the shift along, which is going to start July 1st. So just kind of right around the corner. And any of the four shift patterns will work. Whips will work. Um, we've got a chatter group up right now on Ravelry. So come take a look. If you're not familiar, there are Andrea Mallory patterns. There are yep. a lot of other patterns that have shift or some variation of that in their name, but it, right. it's the Andrea Mallory. It's the Mallory. Andrea Mallory. Um, so it's a the specific shift. style. Yep. And there's the hat. Yep. Um, so the, her four patterns are the ones that are part of the knit along. And uh, I always just assume people know that I wanted to. No, no, that's a good point. That's a good point because <laughs> who knows? Um, so we have a new to us yarn. We do. That would be amazing and perfect for the DK version, the sport and DK versions of her patterns. Yep. So the sweater it? pattern, I know, takes and then calls for the, DK, the and then pattern. the cowl, which I'm working on, and I will show you in a little bit, uh, takes a DK, sport DK too. So we have, this is from Schulpel Wool, and it's edition three. So if you're familiar with Zauber Ball, it's mm-hmm. very similar to that. These are 50 gram skeins, which is really handy because uh, if you need, you know, you don't need a huge. If amount. you don't need a whole lot of yarn for your particular project, then uh, you don't have to worry about that. These are five of the colors. We have five more coming. They were back ordered, so. Uh, actually, these five that we have, we go pretty well together. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, there's the pictures on our website has actually they they photographed two skeins of each one because sometimes the outer uh, colors are not what all, is the color all the way through. Okay. So, because the color repeats are really long on these, which is nice. Um, they are 100% superwash wool. And the yardage, I believe, is like 164 yards on these. And they're $13. I'm pretty that's, sure 13 That's pretty reasonable. For these. So, uh, they're yeah, they're really pretty. I'll hold them closer so you can see. These are the three that I've got. So these are pretty kind of earth tone ones. And the, the other pack that's coming, I know, has some pinks and uh, purples and some other... A little bit brighter colors in it too. And this nice. one's really bright. I love, I love yeah. that though. So fun. I actually have a um, uh, singles fingering weight singles skein mm-hmm. that's uh, these colors. Uh, I'm wondering if you could, if I could pair them together because I've been mm-hmm. trying to figure out what to do with that mm-hmm. one because it's super bright. Yeah, that's the thing with this pattern because you're using, especially if you use, you know, the marled skeins like this mm-hmm. all together, it just tones down and kind of does some mm-hmm. really cool things with the yarn. Yeah. I'm wondering if I could get away with using a marled skein like that and a um, mm-hmm. multicolored like, mo- skein mm-hmm. that's non-marled. I wonder what that would look like. Mm. Mm-hmm. These are really, really soft, too. That's a really nice, soft, super washable. So. Awesome. Yeah. So we've got five in, and if the other ones come in before the coupon code expires, those yep. will be included yep. as well. So the coupon code um, that we'll give you right now, which is weekly pick shift, excellent. Weekly pick shift is good for two weeks. Two weeks. So it's for any in stock, and it's ten percent off any in stock uh, of the pick yarn. So. Mm Mhm. Yep. That's pretty. Oh, and if you need a tutorial, episode seventy three. Mhm. We did one for you. Because it's a weird, the Shopify system is, it, the, how, where the coupon code goes is not overly intuitive, yeah. particularly if you're paying with PayPal. I think PayPal's the wild card there. Yeah, I think you're but, right. Um, I've had to do that on other sites with PayPal. You go, you have to put in all your information and then come through back. PayPal, and then they send you back to your yep. other page to actually check out. Yep. Yep. So, 
anyway, so hopefully um, you all are excited as we are for the start of the shift along. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that will be will be good. Super fun. Uh, so I am not wearing any hand knits today. Me either. It was super it was really sticky muggy. this mm-hmm. morning. Um, so there was not, not having any of that. Mm-mm. So we've headed into that season. <laughs> it's it was fun. been pouring rain all day today yeah. too. We have like flash flood warnings because we were supposed to get so much rain. And we the power was out for like an hour here at the store. Yeah. It it's okay. Weird. I brought the power back. She did. As soon as she pulled in up. and the power was like <laughs> Yeah. It was amazing. It was. Let, Angela said let there be light and there was. <laughs> Oh, man. I do have, I so I have two out of the three finished objects that I was boasting about last week. Well, <laughs> two, one of them is the knitting It's podcast done. done. It's podcast done. There's no buttons on it. It's not that. She's claiming it as I'm done. I'm claiming it as done. So I just showed the first one, which was the shift along hat. So this is uh, Andrea Mowry pattern, uh, and I just wanted to start it. So the gray yarn is uh, fiber stash twinkle toes. So it's her sparkle, her sparkle base. It's a fingering weight yarn, and the other, the purple, is actually a uh, from CC's wool. It's one of her what's called a crazy skein, and so it's basically just leftover yarn that she has the mill twist together. So it's kind of a marled. It's a very long repeat. You they can look see kind of like this. They they're do. in a skein, like a long mm-hmm. hank. I only got into the kind of second like... mild color at the very, very top of the hat. So I have a, a lot of yarn. I could make another hat with the rest of the yarn from that skein. I probably could get two more hats out of it, actually. So, and what's interesting is this crazy skein is a sport weight yarn so paired with the fingering the little blips actually really pop out because they're so much fatter mm-hmm. so it's cre- really fun I it like is that. it creates a really cool texture yeah. to the hat in addition um or even more texture so so this one's all done that's how i should wear it <laughs> i am good at styling i'm styling so there it is it's a it, it's a slouchy slouchy hat so if you don't like your hat super slouchy, you could take out one of the repeats mm-hmm. and make it more beanie style. I might make one that's more beanie style just to see. Yeah. It's sitting a little funny right it now. Has... Before it was sitting really well. Well, it may be the way I put it on, yeah. too. <laughs> there. That's cute. I like you mean that? that. <laughs> that's super, is that, super awesome. Is that awesome? Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Love that's it. totally how the hat goes. Totally. Totally. Oh, oh my god. Uh, so that is a finished object. Yay, hat done. Should knit another hat because hats are fast. They are so, so fast. fast. They're so rewarding. So fast. And I got all the knitting done on Granny's favorite. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. It's so cute. So cute. And it's blacked. It looks so big. She can't be growing up that fast. It su- fits her surprisingly well. A little too, to the point where I was like, I should have maybe made that bigger. It's so sweet. Ugh. But she can't the, grow up. I know, right? She's going to be three pretty soon. Today's William's birthday. He turned eight today. That's right. I, I knew they were close, but I couldn't remember. Yeah, her hers is next week. Yeah. So. Uh, so it's just, this needs buttons and probably some ribbon to just stabilize the button band a little bit, though I haven't quite sorted that out um clearly the faster way to deal with this is just put the buttons on Mm -hmm. um, probably with a backing button because that helps stabilize it through the knitted button band Uh, but this is all finished it's a dk weight yarn it's from kingdom fleece and fiber works and it is her muscle of yarn colorway so and i have a whole unused skein left that i will have to do something with Mm. hmm I'm sure I will not be able to figure out anything to use that for. Mm-mm. The question's going to be what? So Uh-oh. I think we have some more of the Muscle of Yarn Haze from Kingdom. Please oh, yeah. Her. You could do another one, of, like the fuzzy hats. Kobuk. The Kobuk. Hat. Yeah. 
I have about three sets of yarn to make a kobu cap, which I have not knit yet. I've not done one. I keep buying yarn to make kobu cats. Oh, well, there you, you know, go. Right? I actually have a lot of the gray as well. That would be interesting mm-hmm. paired together. Yeah, it would It would really pull the color down, Yeah, I think. So anyway, so that one's done. You just have to find some buttons. I'm going to go through. I really am going to go through my button stash this time. Because I'm pretty sure I have buttons in my button stash to put on that. I've been consolidating my button stash because I had some here, there, and everywhere. Especially when I've gone to Rhinebeck and bought buttons. Because they end up in weird places. Weird places. And I've got this tin that I'm putting them all in so that I can find them. My buttons outgrew their button tin. (laughs) Oh, boy. Find a new place for them. They're now in a button box. That's about the size of a shoebox. I have extra room in it, so, you know. For extra buttons. For extra buttons. I can now buy more buttons. Oh, <laughs> darn. Isn't that the way it works? <laughs> I really do love yeah. having cool buttons on hand, though, when you need oh, a button. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or buttons. Yep. And I usually try to buy six or eight. Yep. Well, depending on the size of them. Yep. Yep. Definitely. It, it does depend on the size, but I usually try to have a sweater quantity if I love, love them. Yes. Although. Which is funny, because I don't generally wear sweaters with buttons on them. I don't wear a lot of them either, but... I have a couple of sweaters that are supposed to have buttons, and I've That's never right. Them. That's right. I've got a couple that have some buttons on them. I was wearing Gather Together this past weekend, and I did button, like, the top three mm-hmm. buttons. But that one has buttons on it, but I don't ever button them. So, uh, I did not, as much as I was boasting last week, get the Blackberry shawl done. So close. I'm so close. I'm playing a little yarn chicken right now because I'm not sure if I have enough yarn to finish the garter repeats and the um, Pico bind off because Pico uses a lot of yarn. And so I might stop one garter row short just to make mm. sure I have enough yarn. But I, unless something really weird happens, we'll have this done for, for next week. Excellent. Because it's, it's that close. But I also do remember how long Pico bind offs take. They mm-hmm. take a long time. So this is the Blackberry Shawl. We're doing a Blackberry Shawl knit along. And Blackberry is two words if you're looking for it, searching for it on Ravelry. Yep. Yeah, don't put it in, a, it in as one. one word because it, it won't turn up. So Blackberry is two words. So it's a fingering and um, mixed with uh, the mohair. So these are mohair stripes and these are fingering the garter and lace sections. It's a very fun knit. Um, everybody who's been doing the knit along has commented on how fun it is. I think some people are going to knit a second one. Uh, it's just, it's a really cool project. It does take two skeins mm-hmm. of the main color, the non mohair. Yeah, because a lot of people layer. weren't sure. Yeah, no, it's pretty clear. I'm going to use almost all of the second skein. Um, for mine that's a good size it's a good size shawl then yeah it's I so part of the reason why I have not finished is that I am at over 400 stitches on my needles right now yeah yep because I counted because I was like how many stitches I was like oh those sixes they are sixes sixes yep yep uh so that it takes me about a half an hour or more to do a down and back row Yeah. So it's moving. We'll get there. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Like and the tortoise. Then I can wind yarn for glass houses. I wound so yarn. You for glass houses? No. Oh. For something else? Yes, I showed it to you. Uh, the yes. thing that I need these needles for. <laughs> so what you working on? So, I know you talked about it already, but yeah. let's talk about it. I more. didn't end up talking about it really that much on um, outtakes, pre-take, whatever you want to call that. I'm almost done this row, so I can hold it out properly and show you guys. Hold on. Oh, power didn't go out. It's just the 
Nobody's been We've moving got around in motion this motion sensor lights in the sector. Even if we wave our arms around, Here, we're not I'll close go, enough. I'll go get it. Okay. I can't. Okay. Go. You now get. I've got like five more stitches that I've got on it. Now they just cleavage to the <laughs> podcast land. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there we go. You know you wanted to see it. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Kelly can't take me anywhere. Can't take you anywhere. Can dress you up. Can't take you anywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can give me a badge. I'm going to cause all kinds of trouble. <laughs> I am working on the shift. So this is the project that I took when I went to Scotland this spring. Nice. And I worked on it when I was there and airports and airplanes and such. But then when I got back, I didn't. Not so much. It just kind of sat in my bag. And so the next project that I tell you about, which is an upcoming, it's it's like bumping all the other upcoming projects down the list because I'm going to just cast <laughs> it on because I got this really cute new dress that's going to go with but anyway awesome. I know so this is the shift which is a cowl and that looks kind of like a shawl when you're wearing it it's an Andrea Mallory cloth. you can see what, she's holding it in that picture that's the one she did and she did uh, she used spin cycle yarn for hers I am using um, two Malabrigo yarns, the Arroyo, and one of Primrose DK. So, and the Primrose DK is, is more of a true DK, and the Malabrigo Arroyo, they call it a DK, but it's it's more sport. It's a lighter, lighter DK. Lighter DK. So you can't actually tell the difference. So the lightest color that's in here, that's the Primrose, and that's a really round, super squishy yarn. And the other two colors in here, which are just the only ones, the only two that are used in this section that I'm working on now, those are both the Malabrigo colors. So I'm doing one that's pretty neutral. Mm -hmm. Only one of my colors, the darker, the darkest color, has any color shifting really. The other two are mostly a tonal type yarn. Um, I don't know if I've got the tags in here. Let me look and see. I know one of them is Sandbank. One of the Malabrigo colors is Sandbank. Yeah. And the other one might be uh, Potion or... I think it's Potion. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't have the tags in there. They didn't, they didn't make it in. Um, so, That's I really cool. like the back on them, too. I think the back is yeah. really cool looking. Look at that. Isn't that fun? So, I'm not too far. I'm, on, I'm finishing up Section 5. There's seven sections, so I've only got two more to go after this one. Cool. Yeah. That's so awesome. it's it's been fun. I messed up one little spot on my I cord edge right here, but where it is, I'm I'm pretty sure it's that's part it's gonna be kinda like right up around my neck. Well it depends, let's see. This is the edge over here where that gets sewn together and I think that gets sewn together over with this edge. So I'm pretty sure that this is how it's gonna go. So you're not even really going to see it because it's going to be up here. Nice. So, I don't know what I did. I think I must not have... I had to take some stitches out and after I had already knit the row, and I think I forgot to orient them back on the the needle the correct way because you're yeah. doing an I-cord edge. So, I think that's what I did. And it's only one little teeny spot, and you're not even going to notice no, it. No, it won't be noticeable at all. Right there. So... I'm leaving it. Yeah, I'm not fixing it. Totally fine. Yep. Totally fine. So that that's what I'm that's what I'm working on, and it's fun, and it's really intuitive. So once you get going with it, the big blips and the little blips. The big blips and the little blips. Yeah, yeah. it just it's it's the same as it's in the hat. Exactly, yeah. it's the same texture yeah. that she uses in I think all of the shift patterns. Mm -hmm. So it um. So if you've done one, then the other ones are going to be really intuitive yep. to do. It's just a matter of the shape of the piece, whether it's the, the shawl, the cowl, the hat, the sweater. Yeah. Uh, Those joined cowls are, or the shawls, cowls that look more like a shawl. Mm -hmm. I love There's them. a bunch of them. There was a new brioche one that just got oh, released really? as well. Nice. Yeah. I was eyeballing that. So it's a person who's not knit brioche. So why not? Why not? I'll have to look at cool. that. Yeah, they're they're really nice and they're just they're really they're for me they're handy. just so wearable because 
oftentimes I find with my shawls that they're kind of moving around and I'm having to readjust them, even if I have a shawl pin in or something. Mm -hmm. So because I move around so much during the day or my, or I bend over to say hi to my dog when I get home and she'll like grab the end and start pulling. I'm like, no. Yep. Yeah. She, she, we, she likes, um, I don't know why she's always done this, but she likes holding on to something. Well, she's saying hello. She's a cuff grabber. She grabs cuffs. So, of course, this time of year, I don't usually have cuffs, so she finds anything that she can... We taught her to go and get a toy, so a lot of times she will, but if she can't find one, then she'll just grab onto whatever, whatever. she can find, or she's yeah. like panics, and she's like, I don't know what to do, I don't have something to put in my mouth. <laughs> I need something for my mouth. <laughs> I know, so it's it's funny. She's a sweet little dog, but... She's sweet. Is her eye better? Her eye's better, yeah. Oh, she good. scratched her eye, and... She had the cone of shame. Right, but, the cone of shame. But she's on Tuesday. She got the all clear, so nice. she's she's back at it and she's much happier now. She was really Boy, grumpy. Yeah, so. I'd probably be grumpy if I had to wear that cone too. Yep. So, do you have more whipses? I I do have a new whipses. <gasps> okay, you do- talk about your whipses because. We're going to talk about why I am picked this up Unless because I wanna, need my needles. Uh, oh, no. you want to wait? I okay. can wait because that's, that's an upcoming. I haven't started okay. it yet. So I've just barely cast on. Um, finally got around to, Ooh, I know this to casting on the little red pullover. Mm-hmm. So this is another Mina Phillips pattern, um, which I'm calling the little purple pullover for... <laughs> Maybe obvious reasons once I show you the yarn. So let me get the pattern out and show it to you if you haven't seen it. It's a child sweater. She did do an adult version yeah, as right. well. So it's this really pretty striped with this, where you can see this coming down right there. That's a really cool sort of cable detail that's on the um, the raglan increases oh, and nice. then it carries down the side How as cute. well. So it's that's kind of- That's such a nice little detail. Yeah, it's super, super cool. Uh, So when we had the retreat and had uh, the vendors out for that, I picked up some fiber stash yarn. So this is another sweater for for the Little Miss. And I picked up this one, which is Ursula in her Strong Toes base, and then picked up Doddle, which is also aptly named for my child. Um, (laughs) Is she a Doddler? She's a Doddler. She does things on her own time. Mm. Uh, actually, kind of both my kids do, but her more than her brother. Uh, and this is on the Twinkle Toes, so it's got a little sparkle to it. So those are my two colors. This one's the main color, so this will have the cable detail running okay. down, and this is the counter That's color. It's going to be so sweet. Isn't it going to be mm-hmm. cute? Um, I needed the US 5s for this, so I had to finish <laughs> Changes Shawl. Seems to be a common theme right now. Um, That's really fun. So I've gotten, I've gotten that far. <laughs> this top down. It's gonna be so cute. Top down sweater. The only thing that I'm, and I can't tell if I think I need to snug my yarn a little bit. Mm-hmm. Is the increase raglan increases, or she's having you do a um, backwards loop cast on, mm-hmm. um, and you're slipping yarn, and sometimes it's happening right at the beginning of a round when you're changing yarn color so I think I need to snug my yarn a little Mm. tighter I think is partially because I'm getting this like open oh yeah you guys see that maybe not very well I don't know I would say it would block out I think I need to just tighten my yarn a little more Mm. I think if I tightened if that got tightened it would be fine so it's right at the top we'll see or it could just be a design element. Mm-hmm. A little, what looks like a yarn over all the way down. A little bit of lace. A little bit of lace. Meant to do that. So that was, that's my new project. Um, since I cleared some stuff from the needles. And I'm hoping that we're going to be out and about running errands this weekend where I can get in to wind my yarn babies to make a new throwback the new throwback but what I should really do is finish um, Descent and Mm. wear that to Rhinebeck do you have your yarn babies with you? no they're at home because I've got my winder at home can handle them too Uh, I 
I need to clear some other things from the needles. So okay. I probably should do that. I really should just finish my descent sweater mm. before I start. Yeah, because that wasn't too far, was it? Oh, I have one sleeve to do. Oh. And it needs to get steaked, but really, oh, right. I have That's one right. sleeve. Has Jen steaked hers yet? No, she's got one sleeve left, too. Oh. We both <laughs> really? got... Yeah. That's too funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like that would be a good Rhymex sweater. That would be a nice Rhymex sweater. I bet there's going to be a lot of them this year, too. Well, yeah. Be cool. I wonder what the it sweater is going to be this year. Don't know. It'll be interesting to see. It's possible it could be something like one of the um, little crop sweaters, the mm -hmm. uh, Caitlin Hunter Boiler Networks ones that everybody's mm -hmm. been doing, Soldatna, Soldatna or you know any of those. Depends on what the weather's doing. There was what was so Throwback was really big last year. Mm -hmm. And, and Tecumseh. Tecumseh. Those were the two that I saw a lot of. Yeah. So it's kind of neat. Each designer had, like, a big group following. And then they yeah, did, yeah. like, group, group pictures, pictures, which was yeah. really fun. Super fun. Super fun. So, yeah, I don't know. But that would be good. I could clear up a whole project bag, too, if I got that sweater done. <laughs> Go figure, right? Yeah. And could probably have some yarn for a shift because there's I will have extras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, things to think about. I know. I feel and so good whenever I finish a project I that's been know. sitting for a while, so I know that I should just do it more often. Yeah. And I was good for a while. I was not starting something. I would finish something old, then start something new, then finish something old. And I do alternate. plan to run the Ancient Whips Cal again. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That was popular. People had fun yeah. with that. Yeah. So, I have a Lily Pilly. Sweater, That's right. Or scarf shawl that I started a really long time ago. <laughs> uh, really, really. Long time. I was trying to remember. I think I started it between my two kids, so it's at least four years old, if not five years old. Oh yeah, I've got some like that too. I've got some older than that. Well, yeah, but that one really just is kind of hanging out. I haven't worked on it in years. But the yarn's beautiful, and I really I would wear it, and it's would be a lovely shawl. Yeah. So uh, there's that. So all right, back to you. Oh. Oh, are you in the middle of a row? No. Oh. I mean, I can, well, yeah, I just started a row, but I've already showed this, so that's not a big deal. I can stop because this is easy. So the reason I need my size five needles. <laughs> I refused to buy more of them because it wasn't that long ago. I think I actually bought more of them. And I have no idea where the other set is that I actually buy. <laughs> Thank goodness the Zings are inexpensive needles. That's partially what feeds the, like, I'll just buy these needles again. I know, because, of course, tips. we get a pretty nice discount, so that makes them even cheaper. Yeah. They're cheaper even without the discount, but they, they are they're very affordable. They're very affordable, yes. Which is not a good excuse. No. I should not use that as an excuse, but sometimes I'm like, well, I'm at the store. I don't have it. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, I've been, it's funny. I've been thinking about the Soldatna sweater for a while, and I keep seeing them pop up in Instagram feed from people doing them. They're pretty. And the one that pushed me over the edge, thank you, Larissa. <laughs> Hers was gorgeous. Wasn't that beautiful? Yeah. So Larissa from Green Mountain Spinnery did hers in the Green Mountain Spinnery Sylvan Spirit, which it looks beautiful. That's a wool tensile blend, and it's really lovely. We carry it in the store for really long colors. I still have to get an order into them. I haven't. Maybe I can do that this afternoon. Anyway, you guys don't need to know all that. So I decided that I was going to do it because I got this cute linen dress that I really like, and the crop sweaters look really good with over dresses or over high-waisted pants or you know that that kind of look mm -hmm. and so i figured this dress would be perfect it's just like a nice it's like a, a natural color linen it's just a very plain simple and it'd be a great little summer outfit you know mm -hmm. throw on the oh, short yeah. sleeve sweater over the linen dress so i'm like perfect now i have an excuse to make this sweater and so I decided that I, too, would use Green Mountain Spinner because I, I haven't done anything in their yarn in a while, and they have great yarn. 
yeah, and lovely yarn. We have lots of colors, and I decide I'm not using Sylvan and Spirit. Mm-hmm. I am actually using Music, which is a wool, and uh, actually one of them, this one, is the New Mexico Organic because it was white and it was wool, and I needed a white. So those are my four colors. So the two on my right, the ones over, yeah. The dark ones. The dark ones, the brown and the teal, the dark teal, which is called Atlantis, are gonna be the two prominent colors. So the ribbing and the body, I didn't bring the pattern over so I could actually show it to you. And then the white and the gold are going to be the kind of little, there's like little flea flex in the body of the sweater and there's also some other color work pieces at the at the yoke so those are the four colors and look i wound them by hand i didn't feel like knitting the other night mm. but i wanted to be doing something with my hands yeah so i was just sitting on the couch watching tv at night and just wound them up there you go i know there you go but so and i did this, make them their center pole so the sildatna is the one with the dots in the body or the little yeah the like little flea flex versus the what's the other crop sweater there's two different crop sweaters right maybe maybe I don't know. okay what's the one that chelsea just knit with the the blue and the silver and the kind of orange uh foxtails was that a sold out now maybe i've seen some people not do the flex in them Maybe it was that. I don't know. Let me look real quick. Okay, you look. <laughs> look real quick because I'm like, I'm like, huh. So I think these colors are fun and they'll go with a lot in my wardrobe. They've been kind of my, my go-to, the gold and the greens. Hmm. So Apparently I, I closed down my <laughs> screen that was open with Ravelry. Oh, darn. Huh. That's weird. I wonder how so. that happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's always open. Huh. So, well, that's what I'm going to... Yes, that's what I meant. I'm going to uh, swatch. That's the word. I'm going to swatch once my fives are freed up. So, I'm knitting like a mad woman trying okay. to get these done. So, that's Soldatna. Isn't that pretty? It's pretty. It's really pretty. I love the color she used in hers, too. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's the one that Chelsea... Yeah, I think so, made. too. I think there's another cropped one... Um, uh, Dragon Horde Yarns did one, too. Just gonna, it's been in like the top. I think it's I think it's Dragon Horde Yarns that did. It's cute too. Oh, there's a bunch of new patterns that got released. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that happens? Like all of a sudden mm-hmm. there there'll be a big one day somebody will, a lot of designers will just have a lot of patterns available on the same day. No, they're sold on. I think that's probably the one I was thinking of. I'm pretty sure there's a second one, though. Um, that's Caitlin Hunter? That I think, yeah, I thought it was Caitlin Hunter. Yeah, N- it, Navali. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Navali. Navali. Because I believe it's also, oh, it's a fingering weight. Oh, okay. Okay, so That's here's pretty, the, the design on that is really yeah. lovely. So there's, um, there's Navali. That's cute. It looks a little looser fitting, and mm-hmm. uh, maybe she just made it with more ease. Yeah. Yep. I knew but that. it's I pretty. There too. There's so you many. You were correct. Woo! Oh, oh that's there's pretty. the brioche. Oh yeah, that is pretty porcelain cowl. Yeah. That's really pretty. For anybody who likes a brioche, it's called the porcelain cowl. So it's again one of those that looks like a shawl, but. Um, yeah, so that one was. Now that we've totally skidded off the rails, you guys know this is pretty normal. A lot of people really liked our podcast last time. I know <laughs> that was just all over the place. <laughs> it was kind of awesome, actually. It's so funny because we do have show notes, and we we do stay on target. I we mean, try mostly. We we go through everything that's on there. We just kind of like you know take these little side paths out. Frolics and detours. Mm-hmm. There's lots of frolicking on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, so 
events we do have the butterfly cowl shawl class that is going on and then there'll be the drop-in sessions yep Um, so this tonight is the today's thursday we record on thursdays uh it is the last only open to workshop people Mm -hmm. and then the three following thursdays well actually fourth of july falls in there so there's it's actually four weeks because 4th of July were closed, they're going to be open drop-in sessions. So if you've already started the cowl and you just need a little help on a section or want to just come in and hang out and knit, then it uh, then we'll have that going on. And it's $5 for the drop-in, and it's yep. a couple hours on Thursday evenings. Yep. Cool. And we're doing a just impromptu knit-along for any of mm-hmm. the, her patterns that have that short row. Uh, so the... By the designer that did the butterfly yeah. shawl, uh, Marin. Uh, so the butterfly shawl, the butterfly cowl, uh, roiling water scarf, because it all has that sort of short row shaping mm-hmm. um, to it that makes just look so cool. Yeah. Uh, so that cowl started last week, and it'll run through uh, September, early September. Um, we also have the blackberry shawl along, mm-hmm. uh, which is this one. And that one ends middle of July, so a little bit more time um, if you're working on it or if you want to start, if you are quick, you could probably get this done. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Kelly's got a crochet <laughs> along going. The angel is not allowed crochet along, Yep. but she really is allowed. Because she's she's improving her skills. I'm working on it. I only slightly wonked my last crochet project. Mm -hmm. So that runs through July 3rd, which will probably end up, I don't know, it depends on when we podcast that actually might work out. I don't know. We'll have to sort, we'll have, we'll probably, we'll have to chat. Yeah. (laughs) I know. It's summer's hard because there's a lot of stuff going on. It's not hard, but it's just, we have to juggle some stuff. Well, on the holiday and and, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then upcoming, we've got the Shift Along Cow, which is going to start July 1st. So uh, so join us for that. And I'm working on a couple of others. We are going to be doing, I'm trying to think of a better name for it. Last year, we did the Mitten Tree Cow mm-hmm. to collect um, donations for knitted items or crocheted items. So like mm-hmm. hats, mittens, scarves, that kind of thing. Mitten Tree is an actual organization, and we're just doing our own. It's that same sort of concept. So yeah. um, people will call it, like, the Spreading Warmth Cal or something mm. like that. That's a good um, idea. Because we donate those items here locally to mm. a couple local charities to us uh, that provide out. services. <laughs> we, yeah, we have a couple of them, so we yeah. split, the, split the load. Um, One is more based towards teens and younger mm-hmm. adults. So we we pulled some pieces we knew that would work really well for for those. Yep. Actually, I have a thir- I have a new one too that oh, we can nice. get, um, give to as well. Good. So, yeah. So all local based charities to us, and we have people mailing us stuff. I know. So, um, I amazing. probably will get that one started in like August ish to try to run it like August through like middle of November mm-hmm. as it start the weather starts to turn and it's nice for these entities to have this yeah. you know as it starts to get colder here yeah. um so that's coming down the pipeline so just be aware um that we'll be taking donations and we'll do entries and we get prizes for for people for doing entries and we have the way we ran it last year is that if people were donating where they lived they could post those to mm-hmm. enter as well um so we kind of ran two different sets like did you donate at the store versus donate somewhere else yeah on, because online. it's we are yeah. so happy to have you donate to your local. Yep, yep. And we had, we had a couple people yeah. that just mailed us boxes of stuff. I know. Oh my I mean, gosh. it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Everybody is just so big hearted. So. Yep. Yep. So stay tuned. So that's coming up. I didn't put that on a list, but I just wanted to let you know we're gonna run that again because it was so well received, and I think mm-hmm. it's a good way for us all to give back to our community. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was. The agencies that we donated the things to were very happy and appreciative. They sent us nice thank yeah. you letters and yeah, yeah, they just especially because yeah. our winters are long here, so mm-hmm. and we've got a pretty sizable homeless population. Yep, yep, absolutely. 
Um, so, and I think we find we have the um, link for the interview we did on the upside. Mm-hmm, that's right. So we can um, get that into the show notes. So if you want to listen to that podcast or that interview, mm-hmm. um, it's available now. So, which is cool. I haven't had a chance to listen to it. I, I mean, I was either. there. <laughs> no. So I know. <laughs> but yeah, it might be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that I've got to. Oh, Lake Monsters. Events. events. Lake Monsters. Yep. Stitch and Pitch. And stitch and Pitch. Uh, we mentioned the, it a little bit. We yep. have tickets. The 27th of July. It's a Saturday. It's also Star Wars night. And fireworks. And fireworks. It's really, it's fun. It's super fun. It's fun. So it's a good venue. Fun. So. And we also have uh, July 12th, our kickoff party to the Great Northern Yarn Hall mm-hmm. uh, with a talk by Eve Jacobs uh, Carnahan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a local Vermont artist, and she uses knitting in her sculptures. She does some really cool sculptural stuff, so she's going to talk about kind of her journey from knitter to artist. Nice. So that'll be a really, really interesting talk, and and we've got information here, and she's got her pieces will be uh, at a gallery in Burlington, so... It'll be kind of yeah. be kind of nice. So for people who are doing the yarn haul, if they want to see some of her work while they're over here, they can. Kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And we totally forgot to bring over our podcast meerkat. Mm-hmm. Um, it's our mascot Gage. Mm-hmm. And she's hanging out with her meerkat friends. Um. Just you know, doing meerkatty things. <laughs> meerkatty. <laughs> But she also has an Instagram page, and you can follow some of her shenanigans mm-hmm. on Instagram. So I forgot to say that so, earlier when we were doing all of our sh- yeah. Yep. So, well, I guess thanks for everybody for stopping by. Um, you can hang out with us a little bit longer, like another half an hour <laughs> uh, in the pre-take outtakes. <laughs> Yep. We just kept chit chatting. Because we just were hanging, yep. talking about some silly stuff, but mostly just hanging and knitting. So so we hope you enjoyed the informative portion of the podcast, <laughs> but stay tuned for the hanging out portion. <laughs> Let's face it, it's mostly all just it's hanging out. It's all hanging out. Yeah, yeah. There's, some inform- there's some information. Sometimes we're really good and we, you know... We're on top of things, and we don't have to look stuff up on our phones. Give you lots of lots of good what? tips and Which tricks. Which pattern and, was that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Oh yeah. But thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us. Happy almost summer solstice. Happy almost summer solstice. Yep. I know. I can't believe that the day daylight hours are going to start going the other way now. I know. I looked out the other night when it was we had a really clear sunny day and it was like nine thirty and I could still see some light in the sky mm-hmm. and I was like ah this is so nice it really was yeah but <sighs> exactly so so we should be back at you uh, next week for sure mm-hmm. uh, week of the fourth we've got to coordinate our schedules so it's possible there may not be a podcast that week. We'll see if we can swing it. Yeah, we'll see what we've got going on. But but if nothing posts on Friday, it's because we just could not get our act together. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll be back. I will have all kinds of things to share about camping with my family. <laughs> Can't you wait? <laughs> Stay tuned on Instagram. <laughs> Hopefully you get some knitting time in. I get some. By, yes. the, by the fire. I get some. I usually post some pictures, too, mm-hmm. of knitting by the fire. So, actually, that's what I got to do. I have to figure out which project I'm taking camping mm. with me. Because I think if you all remember last year, my project was a bust. Right. And I got it got ripped out. That's right. Because it was going to be boxy. And I was not feeling it. Mm-hmm. Was that the fingering weight one? Yes. Mm-hmm. The fingering weight one. It got ripped out. Yeah. When I started on worsted boxy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what project would be? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe another hat. Hat would be good. A I always I always dream big. I know. I'm always like, like I'm, I'm going to have so much time. I'm going to knit this sweater. I know. <laughs> what? I know. Really? 
I'll probably have socks for sure. I do that with vacation knitting. Yeah, me too. Especially if my husband and I enjoy going to Maine a lot because it's mm-hmm. pretty easy to get there and, you know, depending on we, where in Maine we go, you can be there anywhere from three to five hours. Yep. And it's it's nice because we're, you know, we drive over, so we've got plenty of room. I don't have to worry about saving room. Mm-hmm. We always stay at nice little bed and breakfast because we just enjoy doing that and interacting with the, the innkeepers and yeah. whatnot. So, and they have always have cozy places to sit and knit. So if my husband's off doing something else, then I can just be kind of hanging out, relaxing. And I always bring, like, four projects. Because you're going like, to get them all done. I know. I'm going to get them all done. I have to make sure I have something else. What if I run out of yarn? Mm-hmm. But no. I only end up putting, like, two rows on a project because we stay really busy usually during our vacation. Yeah. Yes. Because it's fun. I mean, there's yeah. a lot to do and see. and Absolutely. Yeah, it's fine. So it's fine. I should probably be more less optimistic. I am very optimistic about how much I can get done. Mm-hmm. Yep. But anyway, <laughs> it's fine. It is. It's fun. We hope you guys have a great weekend. The weather is actually looking decent for our weekend up mm-hmm. here in the Northeast. It'll be awesome. It'll be good. Yes. But. Exactly. We hope it's really nice wherever you are, Mm -hmm. and we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. I should have cut out a repeat. This hat is way bigger than I like. Oh, it's cute. But it's cute. And you're starting to get the colors changed. You got the color changed. But if I would have cut out one Mm -hmm. of the repeats, it would have been, it would have fit the way I like it. So I think it's going to go in the gift bin, because it's, I don't know. It's cute. okay. I like it, it is cute. I think it looks good on you. Okay. All right. I'm just saying. So that's my one finish. One of my finished objects. Excellent. Yes, podcast finished. Oh, that's finished. Oh, picture that's good. So, done. I got my hair cut. Uh, Went for a new style for summer. Super short. Wow, didn't blow dry my hair this morning. I'm super excited. Oh. Just got to get out of the, to- the shower and. I dried my hair this morning. Put some gel in it and was like, we're ready to roll. It looks really cute. I like Thank it. Thank you. I, I'm liking, I'm digging it. I have to get used to, I did have to put like a little bobby pin mm. in because I've got flappy and if I move to, like this, uh, this sure. makes me it crazy. It falls over your eye. Yeah. yeah. But, um, apparently I can play, can do all kinds of fun things with it. That was one of mine. So. That's the, oh, and that's the other one. Oh, that's so Isn't adorable. It cute? I didn't take pictures of either of mine. I did because then I figured I can post them after, but or just have. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was one. Of, I occasionally have projects like that where they don't. I know. You're doing a lot of work, uh, not a lot of work, but you're doing work and it's taking time. But then you don't do a project guide page. Well, it's not a whole project. It's part of a project. So. Yeah, that's. I mean, I suppose the square counts, but. Anyway. 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 I'm trying to decide if I'm going to run out of yarn on this thing. Oh, jeez. I need to give myself a ticket for the knitting police, apparently. Um, I have a mess up on my... I don't, I don't know. I'm... This is... I, I'm halfway through the eighth garter ridge. So I have two more garter repeats to do. So two, two more down and backs. Mm-hmm. And then I have a Pico bind off. Mm, which that can eat up yarn. And that eats up yarn, and this is what I have for yarn. I have a boo-boo right there. But I don't think it bothers it's that See, it's interrupting the I-cord. Oh, yeah. But I don't think it's going to bother me because it's going to roll over. Do you want me to write you a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> sure, knitting police. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's so funny. Um, I did finally figure out how to crochet in the round, I think. <laughs> the first couple rows were a little wonky, but I didn't rip them out. And then after that, I think I figured it out to where it didn't actually look wonky. And I did have a thing that I had to rejoin and then step up again. So I might be figuring this crochet thing out. I don't know. Excellent. Weird.
weird. It's kind of fun. Once you get in the rhythm, it's yeah. It's it's a little, it's fun. And it is fast. I will mm-hmm. say, I knit two. I so I did two um, ten inch squares. One that I knit and one that I crocheted. Mm-hmm. And the knit one I or the crochet one I finished way faster mm-hmm. than the knit one. Mm-hmm. Um, just based on amount of time involved. Yep. So it is it is a thing, and I'm not even that fast at crocheting. So if I got good at crocheting, I could see where it would be a lot faster. Yeah. Because depending on what kind of stitch you're using, the stitches are taller. Mhm. Yep. And it doesn't take a whole lot. You you know, your movement while you're crocheting is pretty subtle because mm-hmm. you're just, you know, moving the hook. Mhm. That's probably why I'm slower. I have a lot more I have a lot more hand motions going on. <laughs> like landing a jet airplane. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's probably a lot more movement going on than needs to be. Mm. But that will come. I'm getting my tension. Actually, tensioning thicker yarn is easier. I think I even have an easier time tensioning um, thicker yarn when I'm knitting, mm-hmm. just the way I run it through my hands. But it's um, that was easier with this project than it was the last project. So mm-hmm. that tells me I'm getting a little more comfortable with, because I run it, I tension it with the other, with my left hand, which is not the way I tension when I'm knitting so yeah that's I mean that's what I that's what I do too which it actually helps helped a lot with continental I was just thinking that like if I can get used to holding and tensioning Mm -hmm. for crocheting in my left hand switching to continental which is something that I'd like to try Mm -hmm. to do I just have to find the right project I kind of been thinking like a sock head hat might Mm -hmm. be a good project because it's all yeah something that's all knitting will definitely help build that muscle memory I I have a couple projects that I've done were which were primarily knitting because the pearl the pearl stitch does take a little bit of time you know getting mm-hmm. used to it um, but yeah so we'll see um, I'm thinking of maybe making another shift hat with the leftovers from my change a shawl oh that would be cool yeah because i could just go do the blips in whatever colors till i ran out and then shift to the next one back same background color for the Mm -hmm. whole thing and then just Mm -hmm. that would be fun Mm -hmm. yeah that'd be really fun that's a great idea so i'm thinking on that and i I know a lot of you have used have made that change a shawl that mina philip did so yeah you could use your leftovers if you have if you have leftovers left and they didn't go into like a scrap afghan or something yeah yeah, I think, I, and there's really 10 colors, so you could just, yeah. And I have another ball of yarn, <laughs> the main color. That would probably be the downside for most people if they didn't oh. run out of yarn. But you could use just kind of a neutral-ish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or even just a solid or semi-solid. Because yeah. I will say that hat did not take me that much time for it being a fingering weight hat. I, you know, I don't find them to necessarily hats, hats in general hats go pretty quickly yeah. yeah i mean even the sock head mm-hmm. hat which has a lot of ribbing and yeah. is slouchy it's, it's really quick yeah 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 totally so we'll do so we'll do this piece in the outtakes because it's totally outtakes material <laughs> even though i believe the huge discussion around it was in the regular podcast yeah but oh, the whole last podcast was, was like one giant outtake. outtake yeah it was totally one giant outtake <gasps> Uh, so uh, Kelly and I were um, amused, and um, <laughs> mo- I was motivated by the feedback on the knitting police discussion uh, for busting that out for Rhinebeck that um, now I've got it between my teeth. So if you guys have suggestions on things that we could enforce as the knitting police. <laughs> we're, we're thinking we- about doing this fun thing where we give out prizes and... Mm-hmm. And it's we're formulating it. We're kinda. working on it. So I figured I'd throw it out if people have suggestions or thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, we may or may not <laughs> use them, but that you know, hey, you guys are creative as well, uh, and you know our sense of humor by now. So uh, mm-hmm. so suggest a way mm-hmm. for thoughts for things that the knitting police could um, enforce or not enforce or just be goofy with Mm -hmm. Um, because I think it's a hysterical idea I know so you may find two knitting police (laughs) at (laughs) 
at Rhinebeck or over the weekend because we'll be at uh, Indie Untangled, Indie Untangled and-, and we'll be at Needles Up. So um, bringing some knitting and crochet enforcement maybe i should be the knitting police and you could be the crochet police <laughs> or i could be the crochet police because oh that my would god be that would be hysterical <laughs> that really would be hysterical <laughs> okay see you know that's why i brought it up in the, in the outtakes because we're already we're the creative wheels are turning we'll crochet you a badge and we'll knit me a badge oh my god yeah there was talk of badges mm-hmm and gauge checkers. I don't know. That might be taking it too far for me. <laughs> like, I don't even know how to check gauge on this crocheted item. We could. It would be really funny, though, to have a tool belt with, like, all these fun tools hanging off of it, like like a gauge, a needle, and gauge mm-hmm. checker, and a fix-it tool, and some scissors. scissors, and spare, spare needles and stuff. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Oh Stitch markers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be really funny. We could, we could, do we know anybody that could weave that belt for us? Because that would be even funnier. <laughs> or you could just crank us a tube. <laughs> and crank tie it around our waist. <laughs> tie around our waist, turn into a belt. There you go. Okay. We, you can see where this is going. <laughs> you could even, you know what you could do? If I, if I did a sock tube one, we could sneak some little pockets into it. <laughs> yes. Okay. This this is going to happen. <laughs> there may have been discussion about t-shirts and visors mm-hmm. or hats. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, you know what else we need? We need like a cup holder where we can put our travel wine glass <laughs> with the lid. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I was thinking about having my friend Catherine make some anyway with like the Muscle of Yarn logo on and we mm-hmm. could just have her add knitting police to the back side <laughs> of it. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, uh, the places we'll go. The things we'll do. Hopefully they won't kick us out. Um, well, I would hope that at a Fiverr Festival they would see the humor in it. Yeah, though I hope so. The location security might be the only one that would give us a hard time right. but I think so the handcuffs are probably out because <laughs> that would probably cause some that problems that would set off some alarms yeah but the belt with the knitting related things the fix it tool and stuff you know it's all part of if the belts turned out really good people might want to buy them they might <laughs> they might um I actually have a pattern to knit a belt. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. An actual legit belt. <laughs> mm. A legit belt. A legit belt, not just a made up one. Which... <laughs> okay, well, this will require some um, thought into to what I'm wearing, too, because I will need, I'll have to, we'll have to probably wear something that has boat loops on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, this, yeah. This is so happening. <laughs> So ideas away for for the knitting and crochet police. <clears throat> we could be the craft police. Craft police. Fiber arts police. Mm-hmm. FAP, the FAPS. <laughs> the FAPS. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, okay. All right, so now that that's out of the way, get those wheels turning. So funny. That's going to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. A little bit. And of course, I would think that the knitting police would make an appearance um, at the retreat as well. Because, you know. Mm -hmm. We probably don't have... Actually, it would be really funny to pull it out at like the Lake Monsters game. (laughs) Probably... uh... If I'll have time to get it I don't together. think we'll have enough time to get it together. <laughs> we do have tickets. I saw the event was mm-hmm. created. It was because I already <laughs> bought some tickets. Oh, I should probably buy my tickets. I will need four. Um, 
sweet. So mm-hmm. yeah, tickets available. Tickets is tickets is on the websites, or you can come into the store. Yep. Let's pack. Let's pack the section. It'll be fun. It's always fun. Mhm. Super fun. Super fun. I might have some Star Wars as people with me, like BB-8 and <clears throat> maybe a Jedi called Plo Koon. Um, so. I would be Chewbacca, but the but Abigail still will not let us take the Chewbacca mask down, <laughs> and literally freaks out whenever she sees it. Oh, it's too scary. We're like, it's Chewbacca. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Poor little. Mm. <laughs> so sad. Uh, um, but I get it. Oh it God. it is scary and it does make funny noises, but it's hysterical. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's hysterical. <clears throat> so, well, now that we totally bogarted the yeah. Oh, and optics. outtakes. I will say thank you to oh. everybody who sent me well wishes too. It yeah, that was really, super it meant sweet. a lot. Yeah, very sweet. It was really nice. <clears throat> I appreciate it, and I read them all. So thank you. I didn't reply to them all. I'm sorry. I read them all too. Like I get them emailed every. I get emailed. That's every right, time. you do. <laughs> I I get an email every time somebody comments, so I see them all. Whether I can make it out to the YouTube channel to do anything about it is another mm-hmm. story, but I do, uh, I do see them all. So, thank you. They were very sweet. Mm-hmm. Very, very sweet. Which I didn't doubt from our podcast viewers. Oh yeah, no, it doesn't we do surprise a great me at group all. Group of podcast viewers. We do, we do. <clears throat> but it was cool to see. Um, I, there were lots of comments from folks that I hadn't seen I comment know. before, which I thought was really I know. sweet. That was really sweet. So, yeah. Um, Much appreciated. Yes. yes. So, all right. Since our outtakes seem to be overtaking our regular podcast, <laughs> our end of the podcast chit chatty, our mm-hmm. end of the podcast pre podcast chit chatty, because we're already up to like fifteen minutes, <clears throat> yeah. which is fine. Totally cool. It's about normal for us lately. Yeah. Lots of chit chatty. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a She's totally fine. I'm gonna finish this shawl so then I can cast on another shawl. I'm trying to finish this so I can cast on another project. Well, I have to swatch. Well, you should tell the story of why you're finishing the shift cow. That's a perfect outtake story. <laughs> well, I might just tell it, you know, during oh, the regular during the because okay. it's, you know, it's legit. I know <laughs> <laughs> other people can relate to me. <laughs> Kelly's not being like me. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't well, know. it's because I've already bought more needles in the same size, <laughs> and they're already used elsewhere. And I'm like, I will not buy any more needles. <laughs> they're size five needles, and lately I've been either using size fives or size sixes. Fives and or sixes, yeah. I just refuse. That's to buy more. Um, I had to finish something. I needed six. Well, this is using sixes and. Oh, the change of shawl was using the five, so I couldn't start. Um, I couldn't start the little red pullover till I finished um, change of shawl because I needed the fives, and mm-hmm. I wasn't gonna buy another set because I have, again, like mm-hmm. I don't know where they all are. Mm-hmm. They're probably on projects that I've forgotten about that are in a project bag tucked mm-hmm. somewhere. And then when I go toss my stash or I'm looking for a specific thing and I'm like, what's in this bag? And I open it up and I'm like, oh, huh, ah, I huh. <laughs> I have to get better about putting my needles back after I've well, there's that too. used them. Because sometimes I've... I'll just throw them in a project bag and then if I put another project in there, then I don't pay attention to what's down in the bottom of it. And I'll find Or I finish the, the bag and the bag with like half the yarn and the needles and no project is just zipped sitting in the closet. <laughs> Because the ends didn't get little bits and bobs didn't put get put away. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, the project bag. Do I have it with me? Yeah, I think I do. No, it's not that. For that shift, the shift along hat um, had yarn from like another different project, or mm-hmm. was it the, maybe it was this one? something recently I was like oh that's not oh yeah in here this project bag so this is leftover from the cider oh yeah the hat the hat and the yarn's just hanging out in there and the needles were hanging out in there and um 
I needed the project bag, but did I clean the other stuff out? No, I just added the new stuff to it. Because <laughs> that makes sense. That's about right. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> Sometimes. <laughs> so I've got a lot of project bags that have projects in them because I ha- mm-hmm. usually have a lot of them going or they're just kind of sitting in timeout or whatever. Yeah. But so I've got them mostly tucked away pretty neatly. Most of them are in my craft bunker. Mm-hmm. But I do have some that are in my living room on, like, our end tables have space underneath so I can kind of line them up in there. And so, you know, and if I'm trying, if I've got, like, non-knitters coming to my house, muggles, Mm -hmm. I sometimes will just, if I've got some skeins laying around, I'll just, like, throw them in a project bag and tuck them away so it looks, you know, kind of tidy so that there's not just yarn hanging out on my coffee table because that's where it usually hangs out. So, yeah, you know. I have some leftover yarn in like a, uh, like a basket. It's mm-hmm. it's all it's nothing that I'm working with currently. It's just where I like throw stuff that I'm like maybe I'll do something with this or maybe I don't <laughs> really know what to do with this, so I'm gonna put it there. But yeah. I have those 21 bags, mm-hmm. the market bags. They're they're actually amazing for yeah. Those are really stuff. Yep. I have like two big ones and one little one, and the one little one slides right under my side table. And it's just filled with project mm-hmm. bags and other stuff. I try to keep it looking neat. And then in my closet, I have, like, <laughs> two others that are filled with yarn and project bags mm-hmm. and Ziploc bags of things that are either odds and ends or are going to become projects. Mm-hmm. Or And then we'll not talk about the rest of the yarn stash because that's only, like, the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> just like, uh, okay. Yeah. We need to just get this. I have those times where I'm like, this stash is a little out of control. I know. I have mm-hmm. times when I do that, too. Like, I do that with my whole house, though, and I start, I'm like, okay, this this has to go, and it, you know, I usually donate it or yeah. do something. And then we go to Rhinebeck, and then it just happens all over again, and I'm mm-hmm. like, no, why? No, actually, I've been getting better. I feel like yeah. every year that we go to Rhinebeck, I feel like I buy less, or I'm more deliberate with my purchases. Yeah. Uh, until last year, we went to the CC's booth, and I was just like, yeah, baby! I'll take it all. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what have I? Whoa. Mm-hmm. Come on. I know. Well, this year for Rhinebeck for me is not going to be as much of a shopping event. It's going to be a research event, and I'll tell you why. So, I, I'm an animal person. I love having mm-hmm. animals around. My barn is, like, really empty right now. Oh. Really, really empty. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I know where this is going. So Angie knows exactly where this is going. It's got baby chicks in it right now. But other than that, it's, you know, it's really empty. So, and it was always my intention that I would eventually have sheep. But um, my horse, because she was older, I didn't want to have sheep around her. And she she's kind of grumpy sometimes. So <laughs> I didn't want her, like, booting a sheep across the yard. Um, but anyway, so... We're not doing it this year for sure. It might happen next year, but we're gonna, we've gotta change out our fencing and do perimeter fencing and get our pastures. So horses are a lot tougher on pastures than sheep are. Mm-hmm. And so we're gonna have to get our pastures back in, into shape and it won't take that long. We actually, there was a couple places on our property where my horse wasn't grazing and uh, my husband's just been mowing those. Well, we have a bush hog with a, a bigger tractor and he uses that and cuts them down a couple times a year and the grass on those was phenomenal and one of them had been pasture that she had been on and it was only it didn't take that long to get the you know the pasture back to a really nice level so we're going to kind of work on some some management stuff around the house before we we do but we're gonna we're gonna start doing some research and figure out what we want but that's the that's the fun and there's so many animals well mm-hmm. at, you know vermont sheep and wool there's some but at yeah. Rhinebeck there's so many yeah because they have the the show that they do mm-hmm. there so oh, yeah yeah oh, so yeah fun. yeah so we're gonna start talking to lots of people and well you know tammy has those bonds. i know oh my gosh i know nobody's selling those right now though oh, because they're they're working on getting the but maybe by the time you're ready to i know i know so there are, some of them are selling, uh, especially the ram lambs that are, um, you know, the first or second generation mm-hmm. because they keep the ewes and breed the ewes to, um, to imported semen that they right. get right. So, so that the, they can keep building the... Building the bloodline up. Exactly. So 
close to it. Yep. So, um, that might be kind of fun. Might be fun. They are really cute. They are super cute. Love it. Ooh, that'll be fun. Yeah. I was doing really good last year at India Untangled until I hit the fuse fiber booth, and then it just all went to, <laughs> just yeah. went down the drain real quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I distinctly remember telling Jen, do not let me buy a sweater quantity of fingering weight yarn. And what did I come home with? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to write her a ticket this year for that. <laughs> From the knitting police. <laughs> that's right. Knitting police. Give Jen. Think, that's ho- That would be hilarious. <laughs> Giving Jen a ticket. <laughs> oh my god, that would be really funny. Oh, oh my gosh. god. <clears throat> we should probably get this podcast started today. Eh? Oh my gosh. That's not a mess up. I didn't mess up. Oh, cool. I messed up this last row, but. <laughs> <laughs> because I was still in the mode. Oh, yeah. That I thought I was in. Yeah. Wait, where am I? <laughs> Oh no, I haven't started decreasing yet. I'm still doing it right. Correct. Don't mind me, people. <clears throat> All right, we really should get on with yeah, it. Yeah, we should. I'll, I'll figure out where I am someday. Someday. <laughs> what color is this? This is color C. You suck me today. <laughs> what, where am I? <laughs> what craft is this? Yep, oh. that's where I am. Nice. That's where I am. I think I did. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Then well, we forgot Gage again. Eh, whatever. So. She's partying up. Front. She's breaking up with all of you Red Sox fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was, that was awesome. That was so funny. I have I have a Lake Monsters hat. One of those. Um, the little ice cream bowl. The ice cream bowl hat. So I have one that's a Lake Monsters. So that's the next. There we go. That's the next appearance. She can wear that and mm-hmm. and talk about our stitch and pitch. Mm-hmm. That's coming up. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Who knew that was the that was the important issue? I today. know. I was like, wow. <laughs> I had a nerve there. Uh, apparently, <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh well. Were Yankees fans in my house? My husband's a Yankee fan, but he's a New Yorker. He actually got to see them on in Chicago when he was there. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yep. They won, so he was really happy. They actually have a decent team this year. They look pretty good if they can keep keep it going. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. It's a long season. Mm-hmm. So. Are we ready? We are ready. Okay. Um, I, huh. So, I think somewhere <laughs> along the way... One of these ends got messed up because I should be doing the same. I'm doing a yarn over at one end and the increase at the other end. I don't know what's going on. Mm. Oh, oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, it's fine. <laughs> Give a ticket to myself. <laughs> uh. I don't know what happened. This is what happened. Actually, this is what happens when I work on these things later at night sometimes. We can, we can make Gage oh. be a, a knitting police. She's got the stare. She's the bad cop. And she cop. looks grumpy. She's the bad she's, cop. She's, she's, she's bad cop. She's bad cop. That's really funny. Okay. All right. Now that we're like a half an hour in. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. Uh, instead of like writing and drinking coffee in cars with comedians, it's knitting with Kelly and Angela, who are mm-hmm. kind of comedians. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny to get Jerry Seinfeld to do a show? <laughs> well, when we become famous after becoming the knitting police, like, maybe we can. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Actually, well, there is, there is that Vermont connection. His wife is related to somebody that I know up here. Oh, no kidding, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a small world. It is. I also have a similar connection to Stephen Colbert. So. Oh, that I remember you talking about. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. But 
Anyway, all right, that has nothing to do with knitting. Okay. Okay.